What's going on, guys? This is Riggs from Clashing FFS, bringing you a brand new predictions video. We just wrapped up week one, and there were some incredible matchups that went down this weekend. We will be sharing different stats and a few of the results uh, from that. And But this is going to be the prediction video for week two. And yet again, there are some incredible matchups that are going to be going down. And I really can't say enough about uh, week one and, you know, what we found. You know, some clans that surprised us. There were a lot of surprise uh, victories for a lot of clans. A lot of clans expected. And, you know, just various results, especially the 10v11 game. Very, very surprised on the 10v11 game. Um, I do have... Uh, Assassin and Wuxia here with me yet again. I want to welcome you both back and thank you for being a part of this. And I also want to get a quick apology out to you guys for the audio, but thank you so much for the support. Um, I, I really couldn't ask, you know, for any more from, you know, our supporters, for the supporters of the channel, uh, for sticking in there, turning up your volume really loud in order to hear you guys, but I'm pretty sure we got the audio knocked out and it should be taken care of uh Wuxi assassin uh you guys want to you know just say what's up to the guys yeah uh, go on, Wux. yeah hey look, really looking forward to doing this it was an awesome first week so i think this is going to be really interesting going into week two with, yeah, with absolutely without a i doubt. think that i mean the, the week one was a was an incredible week i mean there's some great wars that, that happened and there's some great results there's some clans that stepped up and some that unfortunately fell flat on the face and are looking to rebound week two absolutely all right so we're gonna jo go ahead and jump right into it i got my uh, handy dandy list here starting with get right into the action here starting with north awakens will be taking on Axew something. Uh, Sasson, what do you think of, what do you think of this matchup here, the first matchup? Yeah, I mean, it's going to be a good matchup. Both clans lost week one, so they're going to be uh, looking to rebound. Both of them uh, face some pretty tough opponents in week one. Um, I think that it's going to be a really close war. I think that it's probably going to come down to the last half hour, but I'm going to go with North Awakens to rebound and get their first one of the season. Yeah, um, I think, I agree it's going to be a good war, and I think both of them want to like come back strong, and I think this one was really hard to call. Um, I'm, I've actually gone with Axie something for this one. Uh, I do believe that they have more to show than they did week one, and I have taken them. I'm also going to be going uh, with Assassin on this one with uh, North Awakens. I mean, they're both very, very good clans, Axie something... Uh, has already proved what they can do on the lower level as far as MLCW U.S. Uh, Cup Championship. You know, now they're in the big leagues. Um, they had one 10v10. As we know, uh, North Awakens had two. However, North Awakens uh, kind of fell flat. They did have uh, a few dip fails in that war. I'm still going to go ahead and stick with North Awakens. Uh, but like you guys both said, it is going to be a very, very good matchup. Okay, uh, next up, we have Dragon Rejects taking on the newcomers uh, to the league, COC Hog Wars. Uh, what do you, what do you uh, think of this one, Assassin? I think uh, this one's going to be interesting. I think uh, with Dragon Rejects, unfortunately, if you look at the stats, they had six 11v10 dip fails. So mm -hmm. I don't know what happened there, but just based on that alone, I'm going to go with the newcomers. I think the newcomers are going to get the first one of the season. They put up a decent performance. They only lost by one star to War Addicts, even, even after War Addicts put up four 10 tens. So I'm going to go with the newcomers to get their first one, and I'm not sure if Dragon Rejects can right this ship this quickly. I think I agree with you that, I mean, I, this is a difficult one again. I it, this is a tough matchup. Much, yeah, I mean, Actually, I'm going to go with Dragon Rejects just because I think that Dip Fails is one of them things that they're really, really going to like close down on and work on this week. I think we're going to see that fixed. Um, so, you know, yeah, I, I think like out of all the stats, I think that's the one that's easiest to like really grind down on. And so, yeah, I think they're going to get it done. So who do you, who do you think is going to win this one? Dragon Rejects. Okay, I'm gonna go with COC Hog Wars as well, and I'm looking. I, I'm I'm basing this solely off of what happened week one. 
the breakdowns were a little different, but we still had COC Hogwarts putting up 81 stars versus Dragon Rejects, guys, only putting up 74. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, that was the lowest score uh, uh, in the league. So definitely not impressed. They they did yes, and they did have they did have one 10v10. COC Hogwarts didn't have any. Uh, but it sounds like they were able to execute their 10 v 11s and their dips, which we all know is, you know, a lot of people write them off, but these dips are, are still deciding these wars, uh, at, at, you know, at the very, very end. So I'm going to go with COC Hog Wars as well. Moving on, this is going to be, this is a good one right here, guys. We have Kornfeld taking on DLX. Um, one thing I want to mention is Kornfeld had a, a 11 v 11 triple at the very very end of the war to pull out the victory um against reddit vipers um obviously reddit viper and dlx you know some would say they're probably on different levels but regardless getting they did have a 10 v 10 they had an 11 v 11 uh but it's gonna be an interesting matchup nevertheless uh do you have any insight on on this matchup uh assassin this is another uh german uh clans are predominantly German clans, so yes. this will be an interesting match. Um, I, I Obviously, as, as we said, I, I'm not sure if you said this yet, Rex, but we're recording before the DLX war uh, was finished, uh, so we don't have the results there yet, but they're putting up a good performance so far, and I, I got to think that the DLX is going to come out on top of this one. Yeah, I'm going to agree with that. I'm also going to go with DLX because I think... Like, Cornfall, they are new. I think I believed in them week one. I do think they can do really good this season. But DLX, I think they're just another beast. Like I think they can. Um, I think they're going to take this. And I also think like with this being an old German war, it's going to be a lot of pride in it. So I think both clans are going to bring the best. Well, well, me personally visiting Cornfeld uh, over over the, this last weekend. Uh, they are pumped about this war. I can tell you that. Like I said, they had one 10v10. They had an 11v11. DLX war, as we're recording this, has not wrapped up yet. They did have a late spin due to a time zone issue, but they got it done. Um, I'm going to go with DLX as well, just based off of experience. Uh, you know, they've been around these league wars now. At Kornfeld, they, they had that 11v11. They had to get that 11v11. Their 10v11 kind of fell flat, and they did have a few dip fails as well. They had a couple of dip fails as well. And DLX, again, we don't have the exact stats, but just based off of... it's I'm sorry, it's Dark Lunars, guys. I mean, it's really, really hard. I mean, you have to really prove yourself to, to go against a clan like DLX, and that's who I'm going to be going with as well. So it sounds like a resounding DLX between all three of us. And but I will say, nevertheless, it is going to be a very, very good war. Don't count Kornfeld out. OK, next up, uh, we'll go with uh, Wuxia on this next matchup. We have Varhail Slake taking on Bad Intentions. Uh, what do you think of this war? This war, I think, should be another really good war, actually. Um, I did not go for Bad Intentions the first week. I was wrong. I did go with... Say, so was I. And, and, and I was right on that. So this is a bit a bit of a difficult one for me to call. <clears throat> but Heiselecker did have four 10v10s. Yes. Um, I just can't can't go against that. I mean, it was a 40v40. So, you know... But still, I just can't go against that. So I'm going to go with Varhaiselec. Yeah, I, I have to agree with you there. I mean, I, this is a really a coin flip to me. I was literally just just now going back and forth on which one I wanted to go with. But mm -hmm. For the for the reasons you just said, the fact that they put up four 10 v 10s, I have to go with them. I got to go with them to win this war. Yeah, I mean, even with even with a heavier breakdown, they were the only clan. Uh, it was Val Valar Mogulis and Var Helslake who spun the 40v40. Even, I mean, regardless, I mean, 4 10v10s is, I mean, that's, I mean, that's what invite, you know, invite clans are getting. That's what they shoot for. So even though, even though, you know, some will say, well, it was a heavier breakdown. They, you know, they only had 4 10v10s. No, no, no. They had 4 10v10 guys. You know, you can't write that off. Uh, Bad Intentions did have two though, and Bad Intentions also had an 11v11. So, it's definitely a toss up. This one's really, really tough. I do, I, you know, I, I went against bad intentions again this week. Love the guys over there. Gave me some flack for it. Uh, but all, you know, all in good fun. 
I, I hate to do it. I am going to go with Varhel Slake based solely based off of their performance in week one, guys. Uh, nothing against bad intentions. They can win any of these wars as well. They're, they are, they're still a force uh, to be reckoned with in Premier. Cannot write uh, bad intentions off. But I'm going to take Varhel Slake based off of them putting up four 10v10s against um, Valar Mughulis in week one. Okay, moving on. Uh, Swarm Synergy versus Meet the Kings. Uh, what do you what do you think of this matchup, Assassin? Um, I think this is gonna be a good match. Like uh, I kind of gave a little bit of flag to Swarm Synergy Week One, saying that they were over overrated. Mm -hmm. They did not get the victory, but they did come within one star of a very strong forbidden team. And honestly, the the matchup between Meet the Kings and FML this week was probably the ugliest matchup of the weekend. I mean, they were yeah. struggling all aspects of the war. I mean, the final was eighty to seventy eight, um, and they came out on the losing side of this. Uh, so I have to go with Swarm Synergy on this one. Yeah, I'm going to agree with you. Um, I think like both of these clans lost week one. Swarm Synergy did have a better score. I think Meet the Kings really showed how hard it can be to go from. The, the jump from like light to premiere about it is a big jump and i think it's going to take them a little bit longer to uh like really get into it. So I'm gonna go with Swarm Synergy. Yeah, they had yeah, um Meet the Kings had the second lowest score next to Dragon Rejects. Uh Meet the Kings coming in at seventy eight uh stars. And yeah, like you said, you know, they that 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 from Mont Lava we'll get into that, but the From Mont Lava versus Meet the Kings war was very, very ugly. Uh wasn't good. And like you said, they came out um on the losing side of it. And Swarm Synergy, they had three 10 V10s. Uh, so we definitely know their Town Hall 10s can perform. That was a very, very close war um, against a very tough opponent as well. Uh, they warred, uh, yes, they warred Forbidden, which is from the fake Wargasm family. So, I mean, that, that was next up to be a War of the Week, definitely. Um, so I'm going to go with Swarm Synergy as well. Seems to be a resounding Swarm Synergy. Um, we'll see how that war pans out um, next weekend. Next up, both newcomers to the league. Uh, I would imagine it's going to be a pretty close war. We have BD Unbeatables taking on CWC Brawlers. Do you have any insight on, on this matchup, Assassin? Yeah, this one is... I was actually rather impressed that BD Unbeatables put up that much of a fight on uh, Dark Avengers. I, I really did not expect them to to get that one. And then C CWC Brawlers went up to, against a buzzsaw and Gahazi Bomber, but I mean, they put up a good war as well, so I think this is going to be a rather close war, um, but I am going to, I went with CWC Brawlers and they let me down, but I'm going to go with them again and see if they can uh, redeem themselves this week. Yeah, um, yeah, because, I mean, last week I went with BD on Beatles, I figured, if you got a name saying that they're on <laughs> yes. You know? yes, 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 yes. <laughs> so, so it turned out they were like, they were beatable. So I, I just have no faith in them now. So I'm going to go with CWC bonus just for that reason. Well, one thing that I'm noticing, guys, uh, that I wanted to mention in case anybody forgot in week one, those were all even matchups based on the seed placement in each division. And it was really, it was really, really tough. Uh, as you look back at the week one predictions, who we were going to take. I mean, it seemed like more or less every matchup was like, Oh my God, you know, who are we going to pick on this one? But it seems, it seems week two, we're, I mean, we're, we're basically agreeing with each other is the point I'm getting at here. I'm also going to go with CWC, uh, brawlers as well. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, we're just kind of agreeing with each other. I mean, the, the matchups seem not that, not that. I mean, there's still going to be close matchups, but the seed placements in week one made it very, very difficult. And I agree with pretty much every one of the, the, the seed placements that started off, um, that started off, uh, CWO premiere, uh, season three. Um, I'm going to go with them as well. It's still going to be a close matchup. You know, BD and Beatable still has to prove, uh, themselves. Uh, you know, again, both of these clans, uh, you know, did take a loss. Uh, but I mean, they, yeah, it's, it, it, it's going to be, it's still going to be a close war, but I'm going to go with BD and Beatle, or I'm going to go with CWC brawlers, excuse me, on this one seems to be resounding yet again. Um, and next up we have uh Gotaborg's Krieger taking on above and beyond. Uh we'll touch on this one real quick. Uh what, what do you what do you think on this one, Wuxia? Well, first of all, I mean Yotobetsky and I did have a brief 
really uh, what for we got. Um, they really struggled to bring in. They had they didn't get like the dips. They did you know they just did not uh, get together. On the other hand, above and beyond, wow! I mean, they were absolutely amazing. We faced them last week and uh, they were killing it. Um, I I can't see. I struggle to see any can beating above and beyond. So I think this is going to be a blowout. I think above and beyond, I'm going to absolutely crush the Busky Jet. Sorry, I love the guys over there, but we're going to get smashed. Okay. <laughs> what do you think, Seth? I, I, I absolutely agree 100%. I mean, I watched some of the stream from, from Adam and whoever else is streaming that war, but I mean, above and beyond, just straight up brought it. I mean, you guys had a great war and you still lost. So, like, I mean, they're going to be very tough to beat. They're in our division. I'm not happy that they're in our division. But, <laughs> um, uh, without a doubt, I, I think this is going to be a multiple star victory above and beyond. Really, let's watch their muscle and show, show Premier what they had this week. Okay. Um, I mean, they really are living up to their name above and beyond, which is what they did. I mean, We'll, we'll, you know, we can get into more of the matchup when we go with who King Jeffrey's going up with uh, this week when we get to it. But above and beyond, put up three 10 v10s, and they, they just had an amazing war, uh, putting up 86 stars. Uh, King Jeffrey just just falling flat, one star, uh, 85, and they also had three 10 v10s. Uh, so very very tough. And above and beyond came out on top. And, you know, very, very solid from start to finish. Uh, their Town Hall 9s wrecked it, getting all kinds of scouts in as well. And, you know, Quarter Borks, Krieger, they did take the loss against One Hive Genesis. And they, they did have, no, they did not have a 10, let me, let me double check my notes. They had one 10 v 10 that war. Uh, but regardless, I, I can't, it's going to be tough to go against above and beyond. So that is also going to be, um, that's going to be my, my prediction as well. Okay, next up, uh, we already know right here, going, going to go with Assassin first on this one. Assassin's Core taking on TWSS. What do you think? Uh, I mean, you know that's my, who I'm going with, but the uh, reason, reason behind it, uh, obviously we, we had a good war. Uh, it wasn't our, our best war that we had. We put up three 10 10s uh, We did dip drill twice, um, and we, mm -hmm. we're, we did okay on the 10th and 11th. Um, so definitely, there's definitely some room for improvement. Assassin's Corps took the loss. They had a uh, no show from their Town Hall 11 that made them put up only 79 stars. They probably would have put up 81 um, if they would have shown up. They struggled on the 10v11, and they got one 10v10. Um, but I just feel that with, with our 10v10 uh, capabilities, that we should, that should be the difference maker this, this week. Yeah, it's very hard to go against that. I think... Um... PWS has looked really, really strong. I think the Satsis core, you know, they were okay, but that was about it. Uh, so, yeah, I'm definitely going to go with PWS. -S. Yeah, Assassin's Core did have one 10 v 10. I, I was I was unaware that they, I mean, had a Town Hall 11 no show. I'm not sure exactly what happened, uh, you know, with that. But yeah, definitely not good. And even if they, it's, I mean, even it sounds to me, even if that 11 showed up, they still would have taken that loss and that war to Nottingham. Uh, if that put him at 81, Nottingham still put up 82 stars. So, um, very, yeah, very, very interesting, uh, insight. I did not know that. Um, but yeah, I mean, without a doubt, I'll definitely go with TWSS as well. Um, I mean, they'll definitely have to get the, 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 the dip game locked down. How did you guys do 10 v 11? Uh, we won three for 10 and then we left, we just left the last one, one star because we, we knew that we did. Your war generals made percentage. that call. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that was, I mean, that seemed to be the theme uh, across the league. I mean, I visited, um, so far I visited 13 out of these, uh, 16 matchups guys and pretty much with the exception of maybe a couple clans, everyone, um, to, I mean, to, to me of our, I mean, I would say to me of our surprise, um, 10 to 11 struggles, some clans leaving up two, uh, town hall 11s, one starred, so very, very interesting. Very, very interesting to see how it will play out. But we'll go ahead and move on. But yes, I'm going to be going with uh, TWSS as well. Assassin's Corps will, is, still has to prove themselves. And they need their guys to show up. Uh, just plain and simple after finding out uh, that information. Next up, we have Forbidden taking on from Molten Lava. Holy crap. This is yeah, going to be a very, very tough one. And oh man, you guys are right. I got so much flack. Uh, seems to be under, I mean, seems understandable. You know, I, I did, I did plead my case. The reason why, 
Um, I mean, FML did pull out on top. They did prove me wrong, without a doubt. And I'm so proud of the guys over there. But like, like I pretty much say, I always am. I, I try to stay true to my word, trying not to be biased you know, on any of these wars, as, as most of you guys know. I mean, yet again, they're going to have a really, really tough war. They, they really, really struggle with Meet the Kings. Uh, not sure if Meet the Kings just had really, really tough bases. We know that uh, FML and Meet the Kings were both runners up in each of their leagues that they've been involved in. I mean, forbidden. I, I mean, they they took the loss, but they had um, forbidden, forbidden one for week one. Yes. Oh, that was yeah against Swarm Synergy. They both put up three ten v tens, uh, and coming out on top. I mean, just I mean, having that affiliation. Um, ah, this is going to be really really tough, guys. I would absolutely hate. Uh, to go, you know, to go against them. But I mean, you know, having that fake wargasm uh, affiliation, we, everyone knows how tough this clan is. Oh my God. Am I going to go against From Molten Lava again, guys? Is that where this is going? I mean, it's a prediction. It's a prediction video. Uh, again, I have to say, it's not that I want, I don't, I don't want From Molten Lava to lose, guys. You have to understand that. But I, I really hope you guys hear me. My heart always is for FML. But I mean, as far as, who I think is going to win the war. It's so hard to go against uh, Forbidden, who put up the numbers that they put up. I I'm sorry, I have to, I have to, I'm, I'm just going to stay true to my word. I'm going to go with Forbidden to take the win, guys. From Mont Lava, I will say they're planning, they, they plan that much harder just based off of my prediction. I hope they do the same this upcoming war. I, I will say it is going to be a very good war. It's not going to be anything like a blowout. It's going to be a very, very close war. E either one of these clans can win. My prediction is going to be forbidden, but obviously do not roll a uh, rule from Molten Lava out. Hope you guys understand what I'm saying. Um, Assassin, what do you think? Yeah, I, I have to agree. I mean, uh, it sounds like you're trying to talk yourself out of going against them there. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I mean, a little bit, but I'm just trying to be as fair as possible. And it is what it is. Everyone knows my, my heart goes out to from Molten Lava. Unfortunately, this weekend, this week, I, I'm not. Um, Forbidden is just too tough. They're too good. Um, I see Forbidden coming away with the victory this week. Yeah, I mean, if Rich doesn't even have faith in his own cup, you know. <laughs> oh my god, it's already <laughs> starting. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. All right. Let's let's move on. We don't want to get. We don't want this to be an hour and a half long video like the other one. Um, next up, this is gonna be a really good war. We can focus on this one. Maybe yeah, maybe a little bit. I always go back on what I say. Um, but this is a good war. Um, I'll, I think I'm gonna go first on this one just to switch it up a little bit. Um, Wuxia, you can follow me up. Dark Avengers versus Gahazi Bombers. I'm gonna tell you guys, Gahazi Bombers. Nobody really knew much about them. We knew they were Japanese clan, right, Wuxia? Uh, you did that research for us, <laughs> but um, all jokes aside, <laughs> yeah. So, but I mean, all jokes aside, guys. I visited this clan. Um, you record a few of their attacks for the recap, and as you guys saw, I, I'm impressed. I mean, hands down, this clan. You know, I don't want to jinx them or anything, but I, I see, I, I predict this clan going very far into the season. Very solid. Very pumped as well. They're excited. Being brand new to Premier, you know, not having, um, well, they were in, no, no, they were in, was it Rising? I can't, uh, which one was, I know they came from, they came from another league, they're still, I mean, they're level 5 clan, still brand new, uh, but regardless, they put up, they were in light, okay, there we go, thank you uh, for that, Luxia. They lost to above and beyond in the conference semifinal. Okay. Exactly. So they went very, very far in that. And again, losing to a very formidable clan like Above and Beyond. I was impressed. Uh, they had, what was it? They had three, yeah, they had three 10 v 10s, um, against, uh, CWC Brawlers. And that was, that was a very, very good war. Um, and they, they, they won, I mean, they won hands down. Uh, DA had one 10 v 10, uh, still picked, you know, they still picked up the victory, but, I do. I know a lot of the guys over in D. I'm still gonna go ahead and go with uh, Gahazi Bomber two, just by looking at how they performed in Week One, and I I, I was impressed to say the least. Uh, Wuxia, what, who do you think is gonna win this matchup? Yeah, um, Week One, I went with all three Japanese clans and all three won. I'm, you know, 
I think there's something in the water in Japan. <laughs> I've got to go with, I mean, it was an amazing performance by them week one as well. So, um, yeah, I'm also going to go for water. Guy hides the bomber. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I'm a big fan of Dark Avengers. I like them. I know a lot of the guys over there. Um, but I can't argue with the stats from week one. Three 10 every 10. They went four for seven on 10 v 11. Their nines were um, 80%. They had one did fail. Uh, they put up the, they, they tied for the most uh, points in the week for the 30 v 30. I got to go with them as well. Okay, very, very nice. Okay, so it sounds like a resounding Gahazi bomber to I'm gonna tell you guys look out for this clan. Uh next up, um one hive genesis taking on King Jeffrey. What do you think, Wuxia? Oh, this is gonna be uh this is actually a really good war. Um the I mean um King Jeffrey we lost week one, but we lost to above and beyond and we had three ten v tens, we went four for six on ten v elevens and we had one dip fail. Um, that might have been the best so of the we, league. Uh, don't quote me on that, but I think four for, clearing four for six, I think, is the uh, the highest hit rate, 10 v 11, of any other clan. Yeah. Um, the interesting thing, actually, with this war, though, is that one half Genesis, they also had three 10 v 10s, and they also had one dip fail. So, like, looking at the stats, this can be a really close war and a really good war. Um, I'm obviously going to go with King Jeffrey. We, you know, we lost week one, we're out for blood, and we, I'm sorry, one have Genesis, but you're going to be the sacrificial lamb for us. Okay. <laughs> no, I, I, I agree. I mean, I think that one high Genesis uh, impressed me. I, I, I said last week that I didn't think they were that impressive. I was not impressed with them. When they came out, they put up 84 stars, three 10 v times. But King Jeffrey, I mean, you guys had a great performance. You guys just ran into a buzzsaw and, and above and beyond. So I think you guys will bounce back and get your first win of the season this week. Yeah, I'm going to agree. I'm going to agree with you guys. I'm gonna also going to go with King Jeffrey. Uh, one, one thing to note um, before we move on here, King Jeffrey went up against above and beyond. And, I mean, you want to talk about a tough ma- – I mean, you want to talk about one of the toughest matchups – um, that, that, that was it right there. So just based off of who they matched, you know, King Jeffrey taking on above and beyond, uh, who won, uh, what was it? They won light last season. Um, uh, yeah, they were the winners. And, and, and then you have one hive Genesis who put up very similar stats. Uh, they didn't do so good. They didn't do as good as you guys 10 v 11, but as far as 10 v 10s and the dips was the same, but they matched Gorta Bork's Krieger. I mean, we have to admit here that Gortoborg's Krieger and Above and Beyond have already proven that they're pretty much on different levels at this point in time. So that's the reason why I'm going to go with King Jeffrey on this one as well. But One Hive Genesis, you know, just like Assassin said, pr- uh, you know, they impressed a lot of people, uh, you know, without a doubt. Um, so look out for them as well. But my prediction is going to be King Jeffrey as well. Next up, we have Nottingham taking on um, Art of War. What do you think of this one, uh, Wuxia? So, you know, uh, I think it's safe to say where my vote's going to go. Um, I think, honestly, I think it might be a pretty close war. I think neither clan was, hmm, was 100% impressive, you know. But um, nothing else was really strong, 10 v 11. I think that might be an important factor. They did struggle with the dips, so they need to focus on that. Uh, but I'm going to go with nothing else. Okay, what do you think, real yeah. quick, Assassin? Yeah, I thought, I mean, I saw Art of War firsthand last week. They went perfect on dips. They struggled 10 v 11. If they can get their 10 v 11 game together, um, I, I have some friends in Art of War. I'm going to stick with them. I'm going to uh, have a rebound and beat the Japanese class this week. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and go with, we, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and go with Nottingham on this one. Uh, Art of War, you said, yeah, they went 100% on dips, right? Okay, and I see that Art of War, they didn't have any 10v10s. Nottingham had one, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yes, they did have a one 10v10 triple. Uh, just based off of those stats, you know, I, I want, I want Art of War to, to show us their 10v10 game. And you already mentioned that their 10v11 game struggled. So, you know, it seems like their 10s are falling kind of flat, you know, relying on the 11s quite a bit. And, I mean, you're, the 11s are going to have dip fills eventually. I mean, it's just, it's just going to, ha- you know, it's just how it works. So, 
I'm going to go with Nottingham as well. Um, didn't know a whole lot about the clan. They did impress me uh, with their performance um, in week one. And they did, you know, they did have a 10v10 triple as well. So just based off of you know, those couple stats right there, I'm going to go ahead and go with Nottingham to take the victory over Art of War. Uh, next up, we got four more matchups uh, to cover real quick. FYSB taking on Reddit Viper. What do you think, Assassin? Um, I, I think this is going to be a, a pretty decent margin of a victory for FYSB. We don't have the results for week one, but... No matter what, uh, Reddit Viper uh, did not get the win in week one. I think FYSB comes away with three to four star victory this week. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to agree with that. I think FYSB is really, really strong. I think Reddit Viper are decent, but I think FYSB is going to win this one. Yeah, Reddit yeah. Viper, they, you know, they, or they, they lost on a tie. Um, you know, Cornfield obviously getting the victory over them with that. I mean, with like five minutes left, they got 11 v 11 triple. So almost won the war. They didn't get that 11 v 11 triple. Reddit Viper would have won. However, they didn't have any 10 v 10s. And I know FYSB at this point in time has one 10 v 10 triple against, you know, Dark Looter X bases. So we know they can 10 v 10. We all know firsthand uh, that they can dip as well. And their nines, you want to talk about impressive nines, FYSB has it. So they often get quite a few scouts in their wars uh, to kind of set the tone uh, for the war. And their nines hit really early as well. And, I mean, it seems to be a resounding FYSB. Uh, don't rule Reddit Viper out, but they still have to prove themselves uh, in, in the league amongst these monster clans like FYSB making it, you know, to the finals in this same league last year. So or last season, kind of hard to go against that. I'm going to go with FYSB as well. Okay, Emphatic Fury taking on Valar Mugulis. Um, what, what do you think of this matchup, As? Um, I think this is, uh, honestly, this is a coin flip to me. Uh, Valar Mugulis kind of fell on the face of that last week. Uh, Emphatic Fury had a close matchup. Um, I'm going to take Emphatic Fury to rebound. Okay, what, what do you yeah. think, Luxia? I agree it's going to be a close one. I think it's a bit hard to compare to, like, considering who they, like, their was week one, I think it's a little bit hard to say really, like, both of these clans due to that. But, uh, yeah, I'm also going to go with Emphatic Fury. I think they're going to bring it back. And we also know Vralau Mogulis, you know, they, they matched with, uh, or they had the 40v40, um, yeah. uh, you know, against uh, Var uh, Heislake. Uh, you know, the only 40 v 40 of the league. And so, I mean, I would imagine, I'm not, I'm not too sure, uh, the depth of Emphatic Fury's, uh, lineup or roster. I would imagine it might be a 30 v 30 this war. Again, just speculation. So maybe Valar Mogulis might be able to perform at, at a higher level, uh, 30 v 30. You know, some, some clans who struggle 40 v 40 often perform well in a 30 v 30. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and go with, I'm gonna stick with the BFE fam. Uh, nothing against Emphatic Fury. Uh, I, I'm just gonna go. I mean, nothing was said. Neither of these clans really impressed me. None of you know. Neither of them had a 10 v 10. So they kind of both have to prove themselves. And what better matchup to go against each other? Uh, both of these clans uh, taking losses. So I'm gonna go ahead and again, it's, it is a coin flip at the end of the day. I'll go with Valar Mogulis. Uh, see how how they do. And so that's my prediction for that matchup. We got two more to cover. Uh, we'll start with you on this uh, next one, Assassin Unius, uh, Exorcitus, taking on Gunma Samurai. I will say full disclosure before I give my prediction. I haven't predicted this one yet. Um, I have an idea, but I don't have anything circled. But it's going to be, a, I'm going to tell you right now, this could be War of the Week. Uh, well, you know, let's go ahead and call it right now. Let's go ahead and call it Unius Exorcitus versus Gunma Samurai, the unofficial uh, War of the Week in Premiere here. Uh, I, I, there's a lot of hype behind this war. Uh, let's go ahead and, again, start with Assassin. Yeah, I absolutely agree. This is, this is War of the Week. Week one, I was the only one that stuck by UE. You guys both went against them. Uh, they're, they they're the new, they, are the new, they are the newcomers uh, regardless, but I 100% I agree with what you're saying. Yeah, so um, I actually, I mean, I, I think that they're going to continue to prove people. I mean, Gunma Samurai is a very, very good opponent. I think this is going to come down to the very end. Uh, but I'm going to stick with UE. I'm on the UE bandwagon, and I'm going to stay on it. Okay. What do you think, Luxia? Well, I must say, I thought, when I heard, of, like, it's a new clan, UE is success I mean, I thought that was a bit pretentious name. But they did put up a very pretentious score, which one, like, they did, like, they got 
86, I think. They did. It was really, really impressive. But they're against the Japanese club. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and not only are they Japanese, they also have samurai. Names. So that's even better. <laughs> Okay, I'm actually just look just looking at the stats here. So, you know, solely based on, well, a couple of, I'm going to base off two things real quick before we wrap it up. Unius uh, Exercitus put up two 10v10s and they also beat Axiu something. For those of you that that don't know, they were the they were the crown champions in the US uh in the US Championship Cup and they also were crown champions in the MLCW Grand War Division, which is the heaviest division that the MLCW has to offer. Unius Exercitus beat them, guys. I think I've pronounced that name like four different times now. But they beat them. So they beat basically the defending champions of these two other uh, leagues or events that they were in, uh, involved in. Gunma Samurai put up 85 stars against North Awakens, who is very, you know, very, very tough, you know, coming from the North family. They had one 10 v 10. Just based on that, I will also go ahead and show some love to Unius Exercitus. Uh, but it's going to be a very, very close war. I mean, I'd love to be the fly on the wall watching this one without a doubt, but that'll be my prediction. Last matchup right here. We have War Addicts with an exclamation point taking on Grumpy Old Men. Also going to be a very, very interesting war. Um, what, what do you think of this one, Assassin? Uh, war addicts taking on grumpy old men. Okay, no, I, I, I this is this is a sneaky good war. Uh, war addicts put up the four tiny tens. Yes. Uh, grumpy old men. Uh, I, I was touting them as very, very good. Uh, I mean, they won their war, but they didn't impress me as much. Um, but I, I am going to stick with them. I think War Addicts had some issues with their dips, uh, so I'm going to stick with uh, grumpy old men to take this one. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to agree with you and also go um, Aside from the fact that they have still got an awesome name, um, they, I think Boradish are a bit, like, they're a bit all over the place. They, like, they do some stuff that are absolutely amazing and then, like, fall flat in other areas. Whereas I think Grumpy Old Men are more solid, possible. And no, they did, but I believe in Grumpy Old Men. Okay, I'm... I'm going to go with War Addicts on this one, solely based on the fact, I mean, I'm, I'm not sure exactly what happened that war, you know, Grumpy Old Ben only putting up 80 stars. Uh, yeah, that's, that's a tough one. Dragon Rejects putting up 74, and Grumpy Old Ben did get the victory. They did have uh, they did have a 10v10. I mean, War Addicts with that Spart uh, Spartan's Legacy affiliation, and I mean, putting up four 10v10 triples. Very, I mean, very, very impressed. They did have um, a few dip fails, and their 10v11 game did hurt them quite a bit. As the, even with the four 10v10s, they only put up 82 stars. But I do, I do have a lot of confidence that they'll get that the the dip game tightened down, and I think their 10v10 their 10v10 game will still continue uh, to impress us. So I'm gonna go ahead and go with War Addicts on this one, and that was pretty much. Um, I mean, that that was the the prediction we went through. All 16 matchups and week one, I was very impressed. I'm really, really pumped for the rest of the season. Just look at these numbers that have been put up just, just in week one, guys. I'm very, very excited for it. And I'm really happy that you guys were able to join me yet again on this prediction, uh, prediction video. And I, you know, again, uh, before we get to you guys saying our goodbye messages, thank you to everybody for supporting the channel. I mean, all these new subscribers coming in and showing us love. Even with the, the audio flop, you know, you guys still stuck by our sides and, and watched it. I mean, that, that video, we got so much support. Cannot thank you enough and want to keep producing um, good quality content for you guys, uh, for all you guys, you know, in, in Premiere and for and fans alike. So that's what I pretty much have to say. Uh, Assassin, want to wrap up with anything? Sure. I mean, I'll wrap it up first off by saying that I beat you guys in week one in predictions. I got an 11 right without including the last word that we're still waiting on. Right. I'm, I'm uh, at eight. I'm eight. I'm eight. I'm eight for 15 right now. Wuxia, did you tally up your score? Yeah, I'm nine for 15. 
So so far, I've pretty much so I've been wrecked. So I got I got wrecked this yeah. one. Yeah, you got you got destroyed. Uh, so <laughs> wrapping up, I mean, I, I'm looking for another week. I mean, the hype around the fair is, is huge. I mean, I love the fact that we moved it to a different date from invite. We're recovering it. We're getting the hype out there. We're getting the clans that are known. Uh, I'm just looking forward to another week, and uh, it's gonna be fun. What's well, any shout outs you want to give or anything you want to say before we wrap it up? Yeah, just um, I, I just want to do a shout out and say that, and just you know, so people know that I do accept bribes. You know, just, you know <laughs> there you I'm go. Not, I'm not, I'm not anything, it's just purely information. There you go. All right. Well, I definitely want to thank both of you guys for joining me. I'm glad we were able to work this out. As for those of you that don't know, we are on um, uh, pretty much on the opposite end of the world from Wuxia. So being able to get this together uh, on a time where we're all awake at the same hour, I'm glad we were able to work that out. So look forward to that in the future. Con you know, we'll still be putting out other prediction videos for you guys. Again, th I cannot thank you enough for supporting the channel. Thank you, Assassin, for being here with me. Thank you, Wuxia, for being here with me. And... Uh, I'm, without a doubt, I want to wish the best of luck to all clans in Premiere, all 32 of you guys. Uh, you know, great, great group, top to bottom, left to right. And it's definitely going to be an exciting season, to say the least. And that'll pretty much wrap it up for this video. Uh, if you guys liked it, um, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Leave any comments, questions, concerns down in the comment section below. And we will see you guys in the very next video. As always, this is Riggs from Clashing FFS. And I'll see you in the very next video.